Go kill another mic. This, 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 this is the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour. Supported by Albertson and Omni Hotels and Resorts. Brought to you by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. It's Miller time. Albertsons and Tom Thumb, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. Choose VA. Veterans get the benefits you've earned. Visit choose.va.gov. And by GEICO. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. Now, your hosts, Shannon Gross and Brad Shan. And welcome, everybody. It is Victory Monday. Let's welcome. Go! Thank you. <laughs> Does it is it just the mention of Victory Monday Man, that gets you going? It's Brad. It's been a while since it's been three and one Victory Monday. Two years. That's a long time for me. Yeah, I, I don't understand. know how many of these years I got left. Uh, it's been too long. Who are you talking to over here? Come <laughs> on. Yeah. No, it's good. It just feels different. This whole it thing does. feels different and good. And it's Victory Monday. So thank you, thank you, those of you who have come out to our regular Monday night stop. And by golly. For the next uh, couple of months, it's going to be like right here every Monday night. Games are all on Sunday for a change at reasonable times in most cases. And so uh, we're delighted to have you here. Uh, we are on the south concourse of the Ford Center at the Star in Frisco. And uh, we welcome all of you who are listening around the Dallas Cowboys radio network. And we welcome those of you who are watching streaming on DallasCowboys.com. And uh, we especially... I've been really looking forward to this one. Welcome our special guest, Cowboy Safety, J. Ron Curse. Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming, J.K. No problem, no problem. Appreciate you having me here. You know, uh, J.K. does not mean just kidding in the case of J. Ron Curse. <laughs> and uh, I have been really um, fascinated by watching you play and the things that you've done and the way that uh, they've used you and the way you have st stepped up to every challenge. So, uh, J. Ron and I were just talking a moment ago uh, uh, about a couple of things about the team off the air, so I'll, I'm going to ask you this one uh, again. You're far from being the defensive team that you hope to be. You're still missing some pieces, and, uh, and you've got a lot of young, young players, but you're – as a group, you're certainly exceeding some people's expectations, whether your own or not, I don't know. What do you attribute that to? And, and how, how do you think you're doing as a group against your own expectations? Uh, for us, just our expectations are extremely high. Uh, just whether it's just alone in our DB room or as a defensive unit. But uh, I think a lot of the things we're doing is, is, is the things that we, we prepared for and we, and we thought we would do. It's some areas that we still, we still can get better at. But as far as expectations coming into the season for these first four games, these first four weeks, I feel like we, we've done a lot of things that nobody expected us to do, but the people that was in that locker room and the people that worked with us. So uh, we're going to continue to keep working. And I think that by the time those guys get back that we are missing, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be light years ahead of, you know, what everyone's seeing from these first four weeks. What, what do you think you're doing as a group better? We'll, we'll talk about J. Ron in a minute. What do you think, as a group, you're doing better than a lot of folks thought you would? Uh, we're getting the ball. We're getting the ball, uh, and it's just, and it's not even, it's not even just this year. Even you know, coming back from last year, uh, I think we're four weeks in this year. So, and I think we're like nine weeks in a row, nine weeks in a row with the turnover in every game. So, uh, it's just something that we carried over from last year. I mean, last year wasn't all bad, you know, for the guys that was here, uh, you know, so. Towards the end of the season, they was getting it together and they was getting a lot of turnovers. So we came in this year and just knew that that was something that we had to do. We had to take the ball away, uh, give our offense a, a great field position when it when that time comes. And you know, knowing that we got the guys like Dak, CD, Amari, uh, we're not we're not having we're not having Gallup right now. You know, we're missing those type of guys. Zeke, we're running the ball good. Uh, TP. So you know, just always trying to get those guys the ball back and. Uh, see what they can do when they get the ball. Uh, I mean, everybody knows what they can do. One, one of the things that um, really fascinates me about this team is that uh, 
and we were just talking about it a minute ago, um, in addition to all the rookies, you can see all the, especially on the defensive side, all the contributions being made by rookies who were, uh, who were all drafted. But the, there, I've counted eight players, and you're one of them, who came here from other teams new this year. And that's a lot to all work in and be playing and be in the rotation and be important and making contributions. D d is, am I right? Does it a little bit of a high number for all of you to come gel together? And how has that happened? Uh, I think the number one thing is we all have a common goal, and uh, that's to play great defense and, and win football games. But it is a, it is a high number. Uh, we actually just talked about it uh, today. Uh, Coach Quinn said something about it. We had like 30 guys throughout the first four weeks on the defensive side of the ball that's, that's played in the game. And, uh, you know, just in the past, you know, whether it was with Minnesota or Detroit, you don't have that, especially, like, within the first four weeks. So, you know, we're getting everybody involved, and uh, they believe in everybody they put on the field. And that's, uh, I think that's taking us a long way, just knowing that we have the coaches' belief in us, you know, rather than being a guy that's playing just because you have to play. Like, you don't have to play, but coaches put you in because he trusts us. So. Uh, I think that's a that's a big thing. That was a big thing for me, uh, just knowing that, uh, you know, I have I have everybody's belief. Uh, they believe in me, so you know, my my only thing was I didn't want to let them down. So uh, stepping out on the field, putting my best foot forward every week is is something that I feel like I have to do. You know, to prove those guys right. Brad called you J.K. earlier. Do you have a, a nickname on the team? Nah, really. Really much everybody calls me J.K. J.K., okay. Yeah. So did you know that or did you just make that up on the fly? I'm not that smart. Yes. I, yeah. oh, okay. oh, and they call me Big Body. So Big Body, okay. Yeah. I'm going to call you Big Body. With Bohanna and uh, Odigizua <laughs> and Gallimore and they calling you Big Body? Yeah, I think it's just it's, it's more so because, uh, you know, I'm, 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 big, I'm big for – you know, a guy in the defensive backfield. So I okay. think that's the. All right. Well, do you mind if I ask you about your uncle? Is that okay? No, nah, that's fine. Okay. Because this, I was going to maybe get to this later. And look, hey, families are private things. Everybody doesn't doesn't want to talk about their family. All right. But, but it appears that uh, you're okay with it. So for those of you who don't know, uh, J. Ron's uncle is Javon Curse, who was a, uh, an All-American at Florida. By the way, J. Ron was an All-American at Clemson. I'll have you know that. We're going to get back to that in a minute. But J. Ron Curse, you know, I mean, uh, J I knew I'd do that. Uh, Javon Curse, they called him the freak because he was so big and long and covered so much ground. He was a three-time All-Pro, and he had a really nice career with uh, Tennessee and Philadelphia. So obviously there's something genetic going on there. You, got, you didn't get quite the, the girth but for a DB, you got a, is that uh, what you attribute it to, a little bit of genetics? Yeah, uh, it's mainly genetics. It's mainly genetics. Uh, I'm just blessed in that, in, that, in that aspect as far as, you know, coming from a great, from a great line, uh, whether it's my grandfather, you know, uncles, my dad, just coming from guys that's big, so. I guess I just attribute it to them. I guess I thank how them a lot for How that. many of them besides um, your uncle uh, were high-level competitive athletes? Uh, really none. Uh, my cousin, Philip Buchanan, that's actually my cousin. So. Oh, yeah, okay. So. Ruining my whole Wikipedia segment right off the bat. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> okay. I apologize. Right. No, go I ahead. apologize. Go ahead. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. So, yeah, uh, you know, those two. Uh, you know, it just taught me a lot, you know, uh, growing up, high school ball, little league, you didn't even go into college. So, you know, I attribute a lot of it to, to them and, the, and the, the, the growth that they, that they, the things that they learned throughout their, their playing career that they brought to me and gave me knowledge in. I got another nickname for you. You got JK, Big Body. I'm going to start calling you The Voice. You got a man, an outstanding you, voice. You I would kill. To, I would kill in my line when, of work. When for this your voice. football thing is over, you you need to do something with. You know that, who Barry man. White is? Nah. Oh, what? <laughs> Brad, are we that old? We are that old, oh. and so uh, I'm going to leave it to Shannon to school you on Barry White. But believe me, we're talking the break. You're going to like it. You're going to like it. Yeah, uh, that, that's another blessing that you got. 
you know, you were talking a, a second ago about um, them playing you because they wanted had a place for you. They had an idea, and you didn't want to let them down. And um, y- y- the last week, someone asked you if um, you kind of knew when you signed here what your role was going to be, and you indicated that you kind of did. So did they, w- when you were in free agency, did they indicate that they had specific plans for you? Yeah, uh, I was actually, you know, my my uh, my DC in Minnesota was George Edwards, so uh, I spoke with George. I spoke with George ahead of coming here for my visit, and you know, he just gave me the rundown on everything and how they how they visualize visualize using me this year. Uh, came in on my visit, spoke with Coach Quinn, and uh, you know, he told me he reiterated the same thing that uh, Coach George told me. And uh, it was just basically the same things that I did in Minnesota, times ten. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I was I was all I was all for it, and uh, you know, I just came in ready to work. Well, George Edwards, for those of you who don't know, he's he's a special guy. He was on the staff here before, and then he's been with Mike Zimmer in Minnesota for a very long time. He's an exceptional coach and a terrific guy. I'm I'm happy to call him a friend, and uh, and he, that's a good one to be steered by but here's the thing i was just watching the, the first few plays of the first quarter of defense from yesterday and everybody's talking about micah parsons and that's the correct thing to do mike is here he's there you don't know where he is and now try watching 27 go find 27 you're going to see him nose to nose on the tight end. You're going to see him playing linebacker. You're going to see him playing slot. You're going to, now and so i asked J. Ron, a few minutes ago, but I think people would love to hear it from you again. How many times have you ever had this much to do within the course of one game in your life? Uh, never, never. It's a, uh, this is the first time that I've been put in this many positions within a week span, like one game, whereas you can be here, you can be there, you can be here, you can be there. You know, I had times where I play multiple positions, but it would be, okay, this week we're going to play you here. This week we're going to play you here. Rather than coming in, I have to be prepared for everything. I have to know all the calls, and whether it's at the backer position, safety, nickel, I have to be ready for everything. So, uh, you know, it's just, it's just, and I attribute a lot of that to Coach Witt. You know, he gets me ready every week, you know, game planning and giving me the ins and outs. And, really hammering the film with me and making sure I get everything down and making sure it's not putting too much on my plate. They always make sure it's the right amount so I can go out there and continue to play fast. I always think this show in particular is about letting fans get to know who these players are as men, as individuals, not just numbers on a shirt and with a cage on their head running around that you see from two miles away. And uh, and I love the opportunity to introduce J. Ron Kirst to Cowboy fans and and uh, really get to know you. We're very grateful to have you here, and um, we're grateful to have all of you with us, uh, as a matter of fact. And, uh, Shannon, I'm also grateful that we have sponsors, that we can take a break and talk I about them. I am very grateful, too. Let me tell you about one of them before we go to break. Would here, you Brad. please? Yes, thanks, Shannon. Absolutely. Yeah. When it comes time to shop for tailgate favorites, go to Albertsons and Tom Thumb. Get 10% off your groceries every Dallas Cowboys game day when you wear your Cowboys jersey. Albertsons and Tom Thumb, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. And we're also brought to you by Lou Casey, the official bootmaker of the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. We'll be right back on the Cowboys Hour with J. Ron Curse.
back, back, back. to the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertsons and Omni Hotels and Resorts. Welcome back to the Cowboys Hour. Brad Sham, Shannon Gross, our very special guest, Cowboys Swiss Army Knife, <laughs> J. Ron Curse, uh, who, uh, who um, has definitely won the shoe game tonight. Now, as we, yes. we have talked the last couple of weeks about um, Shannon's very strong in the, shot, in the sock game, although mm-hmm. um, I, I do want to point out that you have worn those socks in the last couple of weeks on a Monday. Did I? Yes. I try to mix them up. Yeah, I know you do. Oh, I know man. you do. But I, and they're, very, they're, they're great looking. There's a oh, tremendous design up. thing with a big red and blue going on. But we have seen that I'm very plain because uh, I'm wearing gray slacks with gray, plain gray socks and gray shoes. I wasn't even trying to win this one tonight. And it's a good thing <laughs> because uh, J. Ron Curse has the purple socks, mm-hmm. which is a strong statement to begin with. Uh, and then, and then, are those Jordans? No. Nah, Just uh, Nikes? Dunks. Dunk, yeah. dunk Nike lows. Dunk, and yeah. Uh, yeah, how would you describe though? Those are some serious good looking kicks right there. Uh, I don't know how I would describe them. Uh, I just, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a shoe guy. I'm a, shoe, I'm a fashion guy actually. Uh, I like to do a lot with my dress for game days. Uh, just my shoe game and. You know, I'm, I'm big on the fashion thing. All right, well, we're going to describe these now to the audience, which is primarily a radio audience, and I don't know, since these cameras are on autopilot, for those of you watching on uh, Now watch this, com. J-Ron. If you want to see a professional, this is a professional radio person. I mean, I describe <laughs> things <laughs> here, for a living. Here we go. I'm ready for this. So this Let's so, go, Brad. So, so the basic color motif <laughs> is gray. Uh, and around the edge uh, at the toe line, all the way around is white with a red sole. So you got a basic gray with a white piping and a red sole. The swoosh, the Nike swoosh is red on a navy patch. And the tongue is navy with the Nike inscription. The shoelaces are white. And then there's a part right at the are at the top of the foot, just below the toe to the top of the laces, is that is that navy or black? Navy. Navy, yeah. okay. So uh, lift your left leg, elevate it just a little bit so I can say, okay, no, there's nothing different. Okay, good. See, I you, just want, you want to know how someone that hasn't done this for, what, 40? 40, 40, this is my 43rd season. 40-plus years. I would have said that is Cowboys silver and blue with a red check on the side. And you'd have been right. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing inaccurate about what you would have said. But if this man is proud of his fashion persona mm-hmm. and trying to make a statement with what he wears, then I think we owe it to the audience to be a little more descriptive and try to live up to. He's put some effort into selecting those shoes. I think it merits the best possible description. Those are good looking they shoes. Are. I've got a challenge for you. You're a fashion guy, right? Yeah. All right. Bring your A game on Sunday, and I'll make sure we feature you on the Cowboys Instagram. I got you. I got you. So bring it. Got so shoes, outfit, everything. What you. your did, best fit? What did you wear okay. yesterday? Uh, I wore I wore a gold gold silk button up. Uh, who was it? By Kaiser Clark. Uh. I wore some leather, some leather, some leather pants by Michael Meary. And uh, what shoes did I wear? I can't think of what. I can't remember what shoes I wore. But uh, what uh, color were the pants? Black. And black. so with a with a gold button up and so black pants. So gold gold button up with black lining, uh, black leather pants. Oh, and I wore some white and black shoes. Uh, by Ralph Simmons. I knew we'd get there. I just yeah. all I needed was for you to visualize the whole thing. It was clear that you had that you had a, Now, do you know off the top of your head how many pair of shoes of all different kinds are in your closet? No, nah. no, nah, it's a <laughs> four figures in numbers of pairs, not shoes. Just about, just about, just about, just about. Yeah. And, and uh, how often do you repeat? Wearing a pair of shoes. 
Now I wouldn't I wouldn't say I'm one of those guys that says I wear everything one time and then now nah, I if if the occasion comes then I you know, I pick out an outfit that looks that looks good with the same pair of shoes that I may have wore two days ago or three days ago. Oh, two or three. Um, okay. Um, because if you just intentionally said, I, I will wear them all, but not until I've worn all the other ones, you'd be three years before you'd nah, get around nah, to the nah. next. I just, you know, I just go in there. I go in there and just, even just like today, it wasn't. Just kind of what hits you? Yeah, I just grab some shoes and, and put them on. And how far in advance, like have you already started? Shannon's now put you on notice. But how far in advance do you normally start thinking about what you're going to wear to the game? I already, I have like I have my, I have my outfits already together, and it's just like for the whole season. Yeah, and it's just like what I don't know what game I'm going to wear, what okay. specific out specific outfit, but you know I just on game day I'm like okay I'm gonna wear this. And now how did you happen to pick the gold and black and white and black shoe motif yesterday? Uh, I really wasn't about to wear that, but I asked my girlfriend, I said, what do you think I should put on? And I gave her two choices, and she picked it, so I said, I'm gonna, all right, I'll wear it. Now, you clearly are, I would say, justifiably proud of your fashion sense, knowledge, and instinct. Do you defer to her frequently? Or, uh, do, or do you just say, yes, dear, and just to keep peace and decide you, you're gonna wear what you want to wear. I mean, it just it just it just depends. But majority of the time, I I ask her. I, I want her to feel like her, her opinion input. matters. Yeah, yeah. so it's you know, smart, smart guys. <laughs> see, this is a team Super of smart, smart players. Yeah. So uh, you know, I, I'll ask her. You know, and she's usually she's usually on board with with what I along the lines that I was going down anyway. So, what is your favorite pair of shoes that you own? What's your go-to? What's your favorite pair, and which ones do you wear the most, if they're different? Mm, my favorite pair. My favorite pair would have to be my B32 runners by Dior, black and white. But my go-to is my my Mocha, my Mocha Jordan ones. I wear those. I probably got the more the most wear and tear. I actually got two pair because <laughs> you like them so much. Same color, yeah, same, same, <laughs> same, same exact, exact same pair exact of shoes. Shoe, but I, because I wore, I wore the first pair I bought. I wore it so much, it was starting to get kind of a lot of wear and tear. So I had to get another pair so it doesn't look. So, so you got a dress pair and a and a yeah, kick around pair. Yeah, I got a couple of pairs of shoes. Uh, like yeah, that. me too. Yeah. Uh, but not those. Um, <laughs> 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 but I'm I might be in the market. Do you uh, own any Jordans? Brad? I, I don't, but I actually am. I'm, uh, I would like to. I've got too many shoes for a guy, but but maybe not <laughs> because we've just re we've just set a new bar. But on the other hand, I mean, I mean, look at him. The man looks good. He's got to look good. So uh, I'm not really trying to be in that league because I I'm just trying to stay in my lane. Um, when did you develop this keen interest in fashion? Uh, probably my my freshman year, my freshman year of college at Clemson. Yeah, yeah. I was just able to, I was able to start buying buying more things. You know, so don't, don't make me make a joke about. I was going to say I was paying you Clemson, so you can now you can now <laughs> afford your award. Don't make me do that now. Come on, J.K. Yeah, nah. <laughs> I just was able to, you know, I was able to start start buying more things, especially shoes. You know, I, I started out just like being a big shoe guy. And then, you know, when I got when I got drafted, I kinda turned into, you know, along the lines of, you know, I wanted to put on a nice suit or rather it's it's I'm just going out on the casual. You know, I just started to kinda put together my own looks and I started getting compliments about it and then I was like, you know, I actually like I like you know, mixing it up. When did you know you were good at it? Like I said, I uh, started getting compliments about what I was wearing. People started asking, do you have a stylist? I'm like, nah, I do this all myself. So 
that's when I kind of realized, okay. Then you really you. realize it about that second contract, that third contract, <laughs> and it's like, you know, I really like this fashion <laughs> stuff because I can afford some really cool <laughs> stuff now, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still, I'm still working on that though. I'm still working on that. Just think of there are, there are more levels to go to. Yeah. Uh, with that, Mr. Nichols Payne, director of all things technical. I've completely forgotten the exact time. It's time. Is it time? I had a sense it was time. Uh, and there's so much more to get into with J. Ron Kerr. See why we wanted to have him here as a guest? And we've just barely scratched the football surface, too. Uh, we will be right back with J. Ron Kerr on the Cowboys Hour. Better agree? Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertsons and Omni Hotels and Resorts. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's, the official pizza of the Dallas Cowboys. That was the voice of Shannon Gross. I'm Brad Sham and J. Ron Curse, the Cowboys' safety, is our guest this evening. Uh, more fashion in a moment, but back to football first uh, for just a second. Um, so all of these different things that you are doing partly because I'm sure George uh, Edwards told Dan Quinn, hey, you can, don't think of this guy as just a big safety now. You, he can do a lot of things. Um, what are you most comfortable doing? What do you like doing most? Uh, I, I enjoy man-to-man -man on tight ends. I enjoy uh, what this league has turned into is basically tight ends are basically receivers, just big receivers. So, uh, you know, I think when you get when you get a, a player that can that can help you limit limit the big plays to those tight ends, I think you you you've added a unique part to your defense because it's 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 honestly not many safeties as big as me. 
you know, and can run, can run like me. So you, you, we have something that a lot of the other 31 teams around the league don't have, and that's a big guy that can match them in size and speed and strength. You know, what's interesting is that uh, you, you are the, the physical dimensions you are. Uh, Israel Mukwamu is um, kind of a J. Ron Kerr starter set, right? <laughs> and then, and then uh, uh, KZ and uh, Hooker are different than that, and so is Donovan Wilson, who you guys are playing so well without so many guys, you just forget about the guys who are, who are coming back. Uh, but um, does that mean that there are, like, specific things that you can do that they would not ask Hooker to do or or KZ or Wilson? Yeah, I think it's because I think all of our games are, are different. Uh, you know, KZ KZ's a guy that, that's led this league in, in, in picks before. You know, I think he had like eight in 2017 or 18, something like that, led the league. Diggs uh, going to have that here by Thursday, I think. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, and then you got you got you got Hooker who you know Malik Malik has been a, a ball hawk you right. know from his Ohio State days till when he got in the league he just you know just dealt with a couple injuries and then uh, you got Donovan Donovan is just a he's a he's on go he's a he's a he's a speed guy he's a fast guy and he never stops uh, then you got me just a bigger guy that can you know can get in the box and you don't lose you don't lose the the size of a linebacker or you don't lose the speed of a DB and then. Uh, so I, I believe we all we all have our unique unique traits that we bring to the defense, and uh, you know it, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun when we get when we get Dono back, and I know I know they're gonna cook some up for for how we can like we're all we're all gonna have our unique roles, you know when it when it comes down to to game planning and going against uh, these teams in the league. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. You've you've played mostly special teams in Minnesota and Detroit, right? Mm -hmm. Because the casual cowboy fan who was not familiar with your work would look at what you've done here this first month. And all of us who saw training camp said, well, the guy's having a great camp. Um, and they, a lot of fans might look at that and say, what, how did he, why was he a free agent? Why was he, how's this guy on the street? Have you just had coaches interested in giving you better opportunity here than you've had in your previous stops? Uh, for for my the start of my career, I came into I came into a situation which was, you know, we had Harrison Smith, uh, and uh, we basically we played the same the same thing, and you know everyone Harrison's a great great a great, great great safety. Yep. Uh, I think he's a Hall of Famer. So you know it's kind of tough coming in and and kind of thinking you're going to get playing time when you're playing behind someone like that. So uh, that's when I kind of – I grew into the role of the big nickel where, you know, they found a way to give me snaps throughout the week. Uh, but it was still it was still tough because we still had so many great linebackers. It's just like how do we take a linebacker off the field? So – and then uh, Detroit, you know, I got my first shot when I was in Detroit, uh, you know, started seven games, uh, you know, Feel like I played pretty good, but it was still, you know, it was still tough. And then just now, just being here, you know, and you know, just happy, just happy, you know, coming to work every day, I'm happy, and just being around the guys and just how they they welcome all of us free agents in. Uh, you know, I just feel good playing football here. So I think that kind of translates to what I'm putting out on the field and. Uh, I, I can't be – I can't thank God enough, actually. Uh, you know, everything everything that's going on now is has been his timing, and, then, you know, I'm just – I'm thankful and grateful for the opportunity that I have here with the Cowboys. Even though you have that amazing voice, <laughs> you don't seem to use it a whole lot off the field. You seem like kind of a quiet guy. Is that a, is that a good assumption? Yeah. That, kind, that, of, kind of to yourself a little bit. But on the field, I, I'm down there. I'm down there when you come out of the locker room. I'm down there when you're out on the field. You're a little bit different on the field. You're a little more outspoken, and you you break the DBs down. How did how did how did that come about? How did you become the vocal guy? Have you always been that way? Is that something you just you, you just kind of stepped into on this team? Like what? 
Why are you so different on the field? Uh, right now, it's just uh, we have a young we have a young team. We have a young team, so I think I'm like the oldest guy in the secondary. Is that crazy to you? Yeah, it is. It <laughs> is because I've never been in a situation where, you know, it's, at least since I've been in the league, where I have to be the leader. Where it's like I'm the oldest guy in the secondary, and I'm 27 years old. I'm going, in, I'm in year six, so it's like they look to me like. Like I've been in the league like twelve years, <laughs> so like I look at Brad, like wow, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that's just why. That's just why. And I knew it. I knew you know coming in here, uh, in order for us to, you know, to be what we needed to be, we had to have some guys that guys just had to lead. Uh, you know, when you got such a young group that hasn't that hasn't seen a that hasn't seen a lot of football, and uh, you know, I've seen some football. I played. I played with great players. I've I've learned from a lot of great players. Uh, through my times in Minnesota. So, you know, I just kind of, I kind of tell guys, you know, the things I've seen, you know, we had top five defense in Minnesota. And I tell guys, you know, and, and, and preach to them what it looks like. I know what it looks like. So I kind of try to put us in that, that, same, that same ballpark as far as the, the way we move, the way, the, the way we got to handle business, whether it's a walkthrough, whether it's, you know, anything, talk through meeting, or I just kind of try, get everybody together i want to make sure everybody understands the the opportunity that we have you know uh like we talked about expectations many didn't have expectations as high as we have for ourselves so we're already starting when you start like we're starting here but our expectations are here so even if we don't reach our expectations and we're here we're above what everybody else thought we were going to be anyway so uh I just kind of keep, keep on the young guys, the guys like Micah, uh, Ose. You know, you got guys that's going to be great players, like, for years to come in this league, but they don't know what it really looks like because they haven't seen it. They're just now, and I try to be that guy that they can look at and be like, okay, I see how he, he moves and how he attacks things. He watches film and things like that. For those of us that have never been in a position group huddle on an NFL team on a game day, is there any part of that conversation you can share with us? And repeat. <laughs> this is live radio. In front of possible Remember that. children. <laughs> uh, not, not for me. Not for me. <laughs> not for me. Not for me. Uh, do, you, uh, do you talk to receivers? Uh, I try to. I try. To, I just. I just. I just go out and work. <laughs> That's a yes. Yeah, yeah, That's a yes. That's a big yes. <laughs> Let me tell you something else. Those of you who are not here. And those of you who, you know, the great thing about this being on DallasCowboys.com is if you're listening on the radio, you can go back and see it tomorrow. The smile on this man <laughs> is 10 billion watts, $50,000 a smile. I mean, this is one of the great smiles I've ever seen. And it becomes a grin effortlessly. And so that is, uh, it seems to me, part of your magnetism. And uh, I'm sure that comes out in the, in the personality. And that's why Shannon said that's a yes, because the smile on his face when, when we try to get him to say, what do you talk? And do you get, if a receiver talks back, tight ends are usually a little less chatty than wide receivers, usually, not all the time. Um, if a receiver talks back, do you think, okay, I've got him, I'm in his head? Uh. Not for me. I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm thinking to myself, I got to be on my A game because you can't be a guy that, that talks and then not back it up. So if I'm talking to you and you're talking back now, we're in a battle all game and I have to be on my A game all game. Already on top of how I feel like I have to play, it just goes up even more because I can't talk, I can't talk smack to you and then turn out and not be <laughs> who I have to be. Now, th this this whole uh, travelogue of an NFL player always fascinates me. Uh, you were an All-American at Clemson and um, and then a seventh round draft choice, mm -hmm. which, you know, that's fine. A lot of guys are free agents. And seventh round, the same thing as the first round once you're in camp. That's what they always say, and it's almost true. But um, how, how did you make that? That had to be a little bit of a shock to you. So you're an All-American at Clemson. Now you talked about expectations. I, I always like to differentiate between expectations and hopes.
But when you have, when you're an All-American at Clemson, you probably have expectations of what your life in the league is going to be like. Did you not? Yeah. Uh, for me, that was that was probably that was that was that was a that was one of my toughest days of my life. Uh, you know, going into my junior year, going into my junior year, having first round grade. Then you know, playing my junior year, becoming All American my junior year. Then deciding to come out and sitting through those first two days was 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 the longest days of my life. And then day three came, and that was the longest day of my life. Uh, you know, I actually I cried that day uh, just because I I, wor- I felt like I worked so hard. I worked so hard to to get to a certain point in my life, and I just felt like that wasn't going to happen. You know, the dream of being drafted. So, you know, it just it just feel it just filled me. Uh, but you know, it's, it's it's a part of this business. You know, you got a lot of guys that, you know. Don't think they're going first round. Go first round. Guys that think they're going first round don't go first round. But like you said, once you get in the camp, you know we're all we're all right here. We're all at the same level together, you know. And you know we get out there and we put our best foot forward, you know. And I was, you know, I was blessed and to to be able to, you know, make the make the 53, and uh, you know I just took it from there and just kept working. Does that three day period fuel you still to this day? Yes, it does. For the simple fact that I felt like even even now, even now with everything that's going on, you know, everything that I'm doing now is no shock to me. And just like I look at, I look at it as, you know, I wasn't taken when I felt like I should have been taken, you know. And then the guys taking ahead of me, you know, I just I go out every I go out every day, and you know, I, I look to just make sure everybody's look looks dumb for lack of a better word you look dumb because you know the guys you took in front of me i just want to continue to show that they're not the same player i was they don't have the same thing that i have inside of me like whether it was speed whether it was size strength whatever it may be that you know you may have felt they were a better choice i just i'm just working to prove that they were well right now the team that gave you the uniform you're wearing is looking pretty smart because of what you're doing on the field. Uh, we have, this microphone's going to be working, Ted, if we, we're going to have the, those of you who are here with us tonight at the uh, Ford Center at the Star who have questions for J. Ron Curse, you know the drill because most of you have been here before. That microphone will be right there, and you'll be able to ask uh, J. Ron your questions. And uh, what have you on your, uh, on your super sheet there? Sir? I have a, another library. Would you like me to read it before we go to break? It'd be my fondest hope. At the Omni Frisco Hotel, which is right out that window right there, kick off your stay at the official hotel of the Dallas Cowboys with style. That's where you guys sleep on uh, Saturday nights of home games, correct? Yes, it is. Yeah, nice place, right? Yep. Cool off in the elevated pool, savor upscale comfort food at neighborhood services, and enjoy all the dining and entertainment options the star has to offer. Visit omnihotels.com com slash frisco to learn more and turn the next home game into a weekend getaway and do we have a wikipedia page when we come back from break i you know what i have one right here brad you've covered about 90 percent of it but i can do the other 10 percent and we and we, and we don't rehearse this friends can you imagine <laughs> we'll be right back with j ron curse
back, 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 back. to the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertsons and Omni Hotels and Resorts. Welcome back. Brad Sham with Shannon Gross and our very special guest. Look at the line forming for J. Ron Curse. Delighted to have the Cowboys safety with us. By the way, next week, Tyron Smith will be sitting in that very chair. He'll be filling up more of it than you do, but <laughs> Tyron Smith will sit in right in that very chair right over there. Uh, the Wikipedia page, if you don't mind, because I love I love this feature of the program. You know what? Let me let me get this last live read out of the way, and then we'll. I'm sorry, I thought we'd done that. No, oh, I think we got one I'm more because it's our up. good friends at Jack Black, and if you want to use what the pros use. Jack Black is the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit getjackblack.com today. And now we can get to the Wikipedia page. I so look forward to it. All right, we've covered a lot of this, J. Ron, but let's just, let's just run through what Wikipedia says about you, and then you, you verify whether it's correct or not. Have you wikipedia yourself lately? Not lately. Not lately? All right, it says you're a native of Fort Myers, Florida. True. Where you attended Cypress Lake High School. True. Okay. It says as a freshman you were five foot six and played on defense before experiencing a growth spurt. I don't know why it's got that in Wikipedia, yeah, but I was five eight. You were five, five eight? eight. Okay. Five eight, you yeah. might want to go in and update this. <laughs> All right. It says also as a sophomore you were named the starting quarterback. True or false? True. True. Okay. Um, as a junior, you were a running quarterback and you rushed for sixteen hundred yards and seventeen touchdowns. Yeah. Why did you not stay at quarterback? Uh I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to be getting. I didn't want to be hit. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to be the hitter. <laughs> the hitter. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. right can, there with it. Can you still wing it? I think I can. I think I can. Yeah. I wasn't much of a passer though. We ran the wing T, so I was. Oh, had some wheels on you. Yeah, it was all does, all running. Does Kellen know that if if he's ever got a little wildcat formation in mind that you're available and experienced? I think I got. I got to show him my highlight tape. I think it'd be a good idea. Tape. Slip that in there. I wouldn't mind seeing that. <laughs> says, as a senior, you transferred to South Fort Myers High School where you played safety, running back, and wide receiver? Yes. All right. says, you were rated. Now, here's, here's where the talent, the, the athletic ability comes in. says, you were rated a four-star recruit by Rivals.com as well as the number 16 athlete in the nation according to both Rivals and 247sports.com. True. All right. You were viewed as the seventh best outside linebacker in the class of 2012 by scout.com, while Max Preps listed you as the 15th best athlete in the nation and considered you a four-star recruit. Yeah. Now, hold on to that thought for a minute. Okay. Did we read that last one again? The fourth best? Fourth, uh, the 15th best athlete Fifth. in the nation and considered you a four-star recruit. No, 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 the linebacker part. Oh, the linebacker part. You were viewed as the seventh best outside right. linebacker. In the class of 2012. Do you ever look at Micah Parsons and say, yeah, you remind me a lot of me, kid? <laughs> uh, nah, not much, not much. But I did see his highlight. I did see his highlight. And it's kind of, it was kind of the same things I was doing. You know, he kind of. Just, he's just shorter, right? Yeah, and he kind of put on a lot more weight than I did, you know, so. Says you accepted a football scholarship from Clemson where you focused on playing strong safety under Dabo Sweeney. Yes. And it says on weekends you spent your free time as a rodeo clown. <laughs> nah, not true. It does not say that. Doesn't say that. <laughs> it doesn't. I made that. Point yeah, okay. I was just keeping you on your toes because you've been I'm, agreeing with everything. I'm so. just paying attention, right. and I want you to know I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> and then we covered most of this. As Wait, you, hold on. Everybody, just stop for a minute and get a good mental picture of J. Ron Curse as a rodeo clown. <laughs> You're welcome. Got okay, it? go ahead. All right. <laughs> and we covered all this. You were selected by the Minnesota Vikings in the seventh round, 244th overall in 2016. And you have family ties. Uh, Javon Curse, former Florida Gator, is your uncle. And Philip Buchanan um, is also your cousin. Mm -hmm. And that is our Wikipedia update. Thanks right. for. I have one question before we go to the fans. The Braves hat you have on, is that just a fashion statement or are you Braves fan? That's a fashion thing. Okay. I'm not much of a baseball guy. Did right. you play? Did you ever play baseball? Never, never. Just just like the yeah. colors and the, yeah, yeah, it's a fashion thing. Okay, here we go. All right, Jaron, my name is Bill. Uh, I'm wondering, with you being in a, a top five defense over in Minnesota, down in the locker room and such, uh, comparing the attitudes and stuff, how, how are we – in that level compared to a top five, would you say? Uh, 
I think we're I think we're right. I think we're right there as far as just mentality and how every how every guy in the locker room approaches every day and how we move about everything we do. So uh, you know, those were some great players, you know, and I don't wanna get premature and say we're at that level right now, but we're definitely working to get there and we have all the things that we need to get there. Good. Bill, Appreciate thank you very much. Next one. Hello, J. Ron. Congratulations on a great win yesterday. Thank you. I have a question. Since you are a uh, fashion aficionado, who on the team Ooh. impresses you with their fashion? See, this good is a good question. question. This is good. What was your name, sir, by the way? Rambo. That's your real name? That's pretty close. Is that on your birth certificate? <laughs> pretty close. <laughs> Would you like to challenge him? <laughs> no, because, uh, no, I'm good. I'm yeah, good. Okay. Right uh... Oh man, uh, I gotta go with Trayvon. Trayvon, you know, uh, Trayvon. Uh, you can throw a couple out there. Now, what what is it about the way that uh, Trayvon Diggs dresses that catches your eye? It's just unique. It's u it's unique. Uh, it's a but it's also along the lines of how I dress so you know makes sense yeah so I can just look at it and be like some of the same things he wears okay I can see myself wearing but uh I will Trayvon let's see he's a young guy I haven't seen much from him but I can tell he has a little uh nation I go nation oh interesting okay uh I gotta stick with those two guys right now. I haven't, okay, I haven't seen I haven't seen enough from that's everybody. That's good. By else. the way, both defensive backs. I'll just point that <laughs> out right there. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Hey, Jerome. My name is Corey. Um, what's different with Dan Quinn as a defensive coordinator versus the defense coordinator you had in Detroit and Minnesota? It seems like y'all playing a lot fast. I think I saw something on Next Gen stats that said uh, ten players um, reached the maximum speed of nineteen miles per hour, and uh, I believe you were one of them. Uh, it's just really, you know, we, we get to play free. We get to play free. Uh, you know, it's not a lot of thinking with this defense. Uh, he puts us in simple calls. We get fast calls. We line up and we can go play. Uh, I think that's the, that's the main thing that that's allowing guys to go out there, uh, and, and, and play fast. I think the number one thing that slows a lot of players down, no matter how old you are, uh, is just having to think too much. When you have to think too much, you're not really focusing on what's going on from the offensive side. When you don't have to think that much, you can line up and just go play ball. And I think that puts you in the best position. And I think that's that's what we do good. Thank you, Corey. Thank you. We got time for one more. We got 45 seconds left. Here we go. Jaron, how you doing? Uh, I'm Jermaine. I see everybody touched on everything else, but I see your shirt, Snoop Dogg. What is the DBs listening to? Or what music gets you guys hype? Is there different music in all the groups? Or what are you guys listening to? Real, uh, real short on time. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, we play a speaker in the locker room, and sometimes guys put their own music in their ear. Uh, me, personally, I put my headphones in. You know, I'm listening to Tupac, Easy e Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg. I old try school. To keep it old school before pregame, and, and that gets me right. J. Ron Kirst, do you love him or what? And love the way he's playing. Thank you. J.K., thanks for your time, man. Shannon Gross, thank Thanks. you. Yes, sir. That's tonight's Cowboys Hour. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!